Let's go back to the Venn diagram to understand the sum rule. So we have B of A in sum rule. We have B of A is equal to B of A and B plus B of A and not B, right? So let's mark P of A and B in the Venn diagram. So that's easy because we already have it marked here, right? This overlap between A and B is B of A and B. Now, what is B of A and not B? So what is not B? So not B is this entire area, which is not B, right? This entire area, this outer area is not of B. And in that, we only want A and not B. So A is this area here marked by the yellow. So A and not B is given by this area. Right? So what is P of A now? P of A and B, which is already marked in the Venn diagram. And this green part here, which is P of A and not B. So now that does come out to be equal to P of A, right? So if B and any, any event, any set of events, which are mutually exclusive, we can do this. We can have an event and into a set of mutually exclusive events, and then that would give us P of A. So let's go back to the sum rule. So what do we have here? B1 to Bn is a set of mutually exclusive and exhaustive events. So that's another thing I forgot to mention. It's not just mutually exclusive, but also exhaustive, which means that it's just like B and not B. So B and not B together are exhaustive, are come cover all possible events in that space. So if it's not covering all possible events, again, it, would, it wouldn't add up to P of A, right? So B1 to Bn are a set of mutually exclusive and exhaustive events, then we can say that P of A is equal to P of A and B of I, where I goes from 1 to N.